I tried all kinds of prints. Like I went to FedEx and I uh, used their higher quality printer, some photo printing as well. The larger paper. Oh, I don't know if you can see the quality from here. <laughs> but the print quality is really good. That's what I was going for. So, so like I, I'm making a website that lets people print out posters like these. So that part has been figured out, I think. Maybe uh, you can have like a store that sells like T-shirts and. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, last time we ended up with this,、uh, where what you're seeing is you, you start with the point on your cursor. We're we're canceling out the sort of vertical axis. We're、mm -hmm. ignoring that for the moment, so it's always plotted at the middle vertically. But、mm -hmm. we start at the point that your pointer is pointing to,、mm -hmm. and then use that as the c in this equation. F of c of z is z squared plus c. We start with a、uh, z is equal to zero. We get the、mm -hmm. calculation, and then we take the result and feed it back into Z and do it again, and we do it iteratively.、Mm -hmm. And the idea is we want to figure out if it goes to infinity or not. There's a theorem that tells us if at any point in time the output goes outside of this two by two circle, then we know、mm -hmm. for a fact that it will go into infinity. So anyway, that's what's going on. So this is each iteration. This is iteration zero. This is iteration one, iteration two, etc. We we put this label element here. Let's make use of it. Let me、uh, play block so it'll be placed nicer, and I'll、mm -hmm. give it a background color. Of light yellow, and then we will display the CR and the CI、mm -hmm. on the label. There it is. It's kind of too long, but I'm not gonna bother fixing it. Last time you asked me, is it true that? Um, if it's less than one, then it'll go to zero, right? And、mm -hmm. I sort of want to answer why that's not the case. If you take c equals to zero point five, for example,、mm -hmm. so c is zero point five. Zero squared is zero. Initially, we get just c, which is zero point five, and we plug it back in. This time, we're gonna do. Zero point five times zero point five for z squared, which is going to be zero point two five, and and that part gets smaller. The problem is we have to add add it back to the original c. Oh, okay, I see. That, that's going to make it bigger. So so just、right. by being smaller than one, doesn't make it go to zero.、Uh, okay, you know, gotcha. It needs to be a really tiny number. Okay. Um. For for it not to go to infinity. One thing I want to do before we go to two D really quick is because the Mandelbrot set's definition is the set of complex number c for which if you do this iteration of this equation, it, it will not eventually go to infinity. The c is my pointer basically. C is、mm -hmm. where my pointer is. What we could do to visualize the Mandelbrot set is to color the point black if it is in the set. It doesn't go to infinity. Okay. And to not color it if it does go to infinity. So leave it be white. And that's how you get the shape of the Mandelbrot set. Maybe I can just do that for the real numbers to show you、okay. what that might look like. So、mm -hmm. instead of generating these color bubbles, I'm just gonna say after going through these 100 iterations, is the number greater than two? Because if at any point in time you go outside of this circle, then it will for sure go to infinity. If it is greater than two, then we're gonna plot the point.、Uh, otherwise, we will not. Plot the point. So I, I move that code that plots the point in inside this if statement. Oh, so one question. So after you loop through it for a hundred times, then you plot the point in the original x yeah. and y. Yeah, yeah, in the original place.、Uh, we we、okay. we don't plot the point that's like 
going towards the infinity. We plot okay. the point from the original place. Wait a minute. Let me see if this works. Oh, I should say the reverse. If it's still inside two, I want it to be black. It didn't go to infinity, at least for the number of times we've tried. If I just don't clear the canvas every time, then I leave a trail mm -hmm. for the places on the real number line that are inside the Mandelbrot set. Starting negative two, which is all the way at the left side of the canvas to this point here, which is about mm -hmm. 0 0.264. More than that, it goes to infinity. So basically, in order to pin this black line, you have to go through uh, the whole horizontal boundary in your canvas in order to figure out which one goes to infinity, which one doesn't. Exactly. Now I'm going to revert back. And now we're going mm -hmm. to do two dimensions now. We're going to do imaginary dimension as well. Mm -hmm. How do we do that? Um, I want to give you an example of how you would do it by hand. Let's say the point one one. Uh, one one means c the constant c is equal to one plus i. i is just one times i. If we iterated this equation, which is that, so f of one plus i starting at zero, mm -hmm. it's going to be zero squared, which is still zero. The, like the zeroth one, you always ignore the z squared because it's going to be zero. So the, the first one is just going to be one plus i. Uh, and then we mm -hmm. feed that back into here. So this is going to be one plus i squared plus one plus i. Right. And how do you calculate that? Well, you, you this part, <laughs> we do the, we distribute the multiplication. You pair this one with this one. Oh, wow. And then you pair this one with the i, which is plus i. And then you pair this i with this one, mm -hmm. which is another i. And then the two i's get paired together. Mm -hmm. which is i squared. What, what's the value of i squared? Oh, it's negative one. Yeah, exactly. It's negative one because i is the square root of negative one. Mm -hmm. So we, we end up with two i, one plus two i minus one. Oh, the ones cancel out. Oh. So we just get two i at the end. And then this whole thing is two i, and we're going to add one plus i is gonna be uh, th one plus three i that's the answer for for this one and one plus three i if we were to plot it on the canvas is basically the dot one three we started with one one and then we get, and we ended up with one three it's all the way up there somewhere <laughs> uh, one uh where where this manual is that kind of took a while so i won't keep going but but if you kept going i if you did it one more time we'll end up at negative seven seven which is kind of crazy because that's all the way over there so it started here and then went up there and then flew all the way back there that's kind of mm -hmm. crazy but let's get the general equation of this thing let's say z was a plus b we need to be able to do, perform z squared. How do we do z squared? Well, z squared is going to be a plus b times i squared, mm -hmm. which is going to be, we're going to break those terms out, and then we're going to do the distribution thing. A gets paired with A, and then A gets paired with B, I, and then this mm -hmm. B, I gets paired with A. Mm -hmm. And then the two B, I's get paired with each other. So it's going to be B squared and then I squared. These two guys become two times A, B, I. And then okay. this, this guy just becomes negative B squared. So the end result 
is this. And if you take a look at what the real part is and what the imaginary part is, um, mm -hmm. the, the real part is these two combined. Right. And that's the yeah. imaginary part. So yeah. we call it maybe the new, new A, A prime or something. A prime is going to be A squared minus B squared. And then the right. B prime, the new, the new sort of imaginary number is going to mm. be 2 times A B. And then we don't write the I because we just want the B part. So, so actually oh. that's the equation of, of, of just squaring it. And then, mm -hmm. and then we, we still want to add the C's real part and then add C's I part to, to complete this equation. Uh, where the C part? I kind of get lost. Oh, okay. So, so before adding the C, we're just doing Z squared. Oh, okay. Assuming Z was A plus B I. Oh, okay. So, so this mm -hmm. is the answer of the sort of the Z squared. Right. But then because the equation wants us to add C, so we, we tag on the C part. The, the oh. real, real part of the C goes into A prime, which is the real part of the original number. Mm -hmm. and then, and then we we'll add the imaginary part of the C as well. So these two equations are what we're going to use in our iteration now. Mm -hmm. And I'll show you that. So now, before we were just ignoring the imaginary part, we're going to bring it back. And before we were just using the half of the height, now we're actually going to use the coordinate of the Y. Oh from the okay. mouse. And that's going to go in here. So C should have a correct value based mm -hmm. on this screen to world function. And here now, we're, we're going to have two equations. Uh, we're we're going to say this one is like the A prime, and this one is like the B prime. Actually, we, we need to be careful and have a separate one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> have a separate one because we don't want to overwrite the original one until both of the calculations are done. I have made okay. that mistake many times. So you have to cache them before overwriting the current variable. Mm -hmm. So this it should be a squared minus b squared, which would be same as zr squared minus zi squared. So and then plus the CR. That, that's what I had over here. And then for the, the B prime, which in the code is ZI, mm -hmm. is two times A times B, and then plus CI, which is just two times ZR times ZI plus CI. Okay, Let's see if that works. Uh, no, that did not work. Oh, I know why. I didn't f swap in the zi to be oh, okay. plotted. We were ignoring it before. And now we get this. Okay. Oh, <laughs> you can see the swirl. Type. Yeah, the swirls are pretty amazing. Uh, if I stick to the real number line, like I just put my pointer on the center, you still get uh -huh. what you saw before. This, uh -huh. is, this is kind of... Uh, we can still, if I align it correctly, it'll still all line up as long as my mouse is exactly on the center. Mm -hmm. But the moment you move a little bit from the center, boom, <laughs> then, oh. then crazy stuff can happen. Um, but uh, also, depend on where you move your mouse, interesting patterns can form like sometimes you have this it, it goes back to the same five spots phenomenon sometimes two spots sometimes it's four spots but then in between <laughs> oh, look at that star <laughs> um th this is like it's at one point it's going back to those same spots but sort of around that point you can sort of see it's like converging to those spots and then yeah. it's like drawing these streaks or spirals around those spots. Mm -hmm. uh, this this one looks like there's three spots, three spots. Yeah. And, and there's three spirals coming out of three spots. And that, I mean, just looking at this, 
is fascinating. Like I could play with this for a long time here. Oh, oh, I look at that one. Oh, this is cool. Some of the times you can see when it goes like this, you know it went to infinity. When it goes crazy, you know it's going to infinity. Mm -hmm. But when there's this sort of pattern, it's probably staying in. It, it, it's like sort of bouncing back and forth within this restricted area and, and mm -hmm. can't get out, it feels like. And, mm -hmm. and that's, those are the points where it's within the Mandelbrot set. It's not going to infinity. Here we're inside the set and then and we're still inside the set we're still inside the set and you, you can sort of feel out hey in this spot it's in the set and then here boom it went off it's not in the set anymore and then it's like mm -hmm. oh okay you can kind of feel out which areas are in the set and which areas are not in the set but you could also just plot a dot there black mm -hmm. if it's in the set so let's do that again for okay. for the for the complex numbers now this time we actually have to calculate the distance from the center because there's two coordinates now mm -hmm. um, to calculate the distance from the center we're gonna add their squares and then do the square root of that number so distance from the center is gonna be um, z r times z r plus z i times z i so squaring both of them and then take the square root of that. That gives us the distance to the center. And I'm going to say mm -hmm. if the distance to the center is less than two, mm -hmm. I'm going to paint it black. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to clear the canvas every time so we can kind of see the residue. And I can, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I can finger paint. The great reveal of the Mandelbrot set. It looks a little bit like a beetle. Yeah. Right? A bug of some sort. But yeah, obviously, I mean, this is a, too tedious to do. So what you might want to do is just extract this code out uh -huh. and just say uh, plot in set, maybe. Mm -hmm. Move it out and then uh, double check it still works. And then we can loop through all pixels on the canvas. And let it do it automatically. There we go. Okay. Um, that still looks like a kid's painting. When we plot the dot, we can use a smaller radius because we were using five as the radius. Now let's just use a one as the radius and uh -huh. maybe we'll get a finer picture. That's what the Mandelbrot set looks like. Why those are, there are dots like separated from the main image? Oh yeah, th these are little dots. Um, there's actually points here that are still inside the set, even though it's separated from the main body. It, they might be connected, actually. I'm not totally sure. There's uh -huh. there are actually these antennas, these very thin antennas that, that come yeah. out from this bulb here and then mm -hmm. connect with these little dots. And those dots, if you zoom into it, it also looks like this beetle thing. Um, okay. the, the smaller versions of the Mandelbrot set. Now let's talk about coloring though. So you asked last time, what do the colors represent? Um, there's multiple ways to color the Mandelbrot set, but basically it has to do with how many times did you have to iterate before it went outside that circle of that two radius circle. For example, if I only did one iteration instead of 100, Mm. And I, I re-ran this algorithm. Oh. We, we would just get a black circle. Okay. And if I did two, we get this little oval. And then if we oh, did okay. three, it looks like a pear. <laughs> um, uh, th this one looks like a stingray. Um, uh -huh. 
this looks even more like a stingray. So, so the more iterations you do, uh, the more it resembles the actual Mandelbrot set. One simple way to color it that also gives really nice looking results is mm -hmm. simply color each one of these Ks with a different color. I can uh -huh. move, move this distance check inside of the loop and say, if you already went outside, outside of the circle, I can just come out of the loop right away, first of all. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to color you with this current K. Mm. So it, each, each layer will be colored a different color. I'm not even going to use this. I'm just going to calculate a color mm -hmm. using a color from my color palette yeah. based on this K. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to just uh, set the color to that color. And then I'm going to plot the point, the original XY, not, not the points that are bouncing around. Mm -hmm. um, one radius. Uh, so if, if, it, if it sort of went outside the circle, we're going to plot that color and be done and skip this part. Mm -hmm. But it, if it didn't go after all of these iterations, it still didn't go outside the circle. It'll come down mm -hmm. here and color the point black at that point. Okay. Um, I'm not going to even bother checking anymore here because if if it was outside the circle, it would have returned at this point. Let's see if that works. Yeah. Well, so, okay. yeah. So, so now I have only done five iterations, but uh, if we oh. pump that up to 100 iterations, then well, we get that. Okay. Yep. So, so, so that's a very simple coloring method that also looks really good. Nice. The last thing that I wanted to show you is how can you zoom in? Uh, how can you pick like a coordinate and then zoom in? I am going to, I'm going to bring back this code here. Mm -hmm. So I brought back the code that will show you the coordinate um, of the mouse but in the world coordinate. For example, I know zero, zero is in the belly of the beetle somewhere here, but this allows us to read out the coordinate. So we can introduce a origin. We can say, I want the canvas to be centered on a certain point. So mm -hmm. if we had that, we would be able to shift the image up and down or left and right, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Let's do that. So I'm going to say there's going to be an origin in the real direction and an origin in the I direction. Let's say go into this antenna looking thing, right? I'm going to zoom in there, let's say. We, we already have a scale factor, which will control the zoom in, by the way. Like if I do that, we zoomed in. So we already can control this scale factor, which will allow it to zoom in. But, but having the origin will allow us to shift up and down and zoom into the exact point that we want to zoom into. So I'm going to say, hey, I want to zoom into this coordinate here, which is negative 0 0.112 mm -hmm. and 0 0.928. I want to zoom in here. How do I make it do that? Uh, well, all we have to do is change these uh, coordinate conversion functions over here. Currently, our origin is effectively zero, zero, right? Like, let's say if X and Y were 250, 250, we would end up mm -hmm. with zero, zero here. But I don't want the center to be zero, zero. I want the center to be my origin numbers. So I just add it to here, my origin R. Mm. And my origin I. I just add them here. Mm-hmm. And the inverse is true here. I want to subtract origin R from here before the calculation, and I want to subtract the origin I from here. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. Now let's see if we can center it on that antenna. Yeah, we're, we're centered on the antenna now. And now if we want to zoom in, we just uh, make this scale factor smaller. And we're going to zoom in to it. 
Yeah, there it is. Okay. We can we can actually zoom in much more. One over three thousand. And we really get to see the details of the antenna. <laughs> There's the antenna. You can see these tiny little Mandelbrot. These beetle-looking things, they are everywhere if you zoom into the Mandelbrot set. So we'll oh. pick one of them and try to center on it. So oh, these are the separated dots. Yes, exactly. These are the separated dots. That's, yeah. And uh, they're, they're connected <laughs> from the main body by these little thin antennas. So let's try zooming in. 0 0.1276 repeating. Oh. Seven, six, a lot of sixes. Okay. And then 0 0.987 and then three repeating. Uh, okay. Uh, I think well, it's this little one. There's a bigger one over here, but I think we centered on this small one. But then we uh, can zoom into it even further. Okay. Yeah, that's our little beetle. And now we can zoom into it even more if we want. Yeah, <laughs> that, nice. that's our little guy. So yeah, that's how you generate Mandelbrot set images. And the, the really amazing thing about this is this image is effectively infinite. Theoretically, you can zoom into it infinitely and there's infinite detail inside of it. I'll show you the project that I've been working on, which has a better zoomer. Like we can zoom back into the little beetle that we were looking at, which was probably this one over here. Nice. And oh, like Google Earth. Quick yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> this, this interface is like Google Earth. And, and it progressively gets more and more detail. And at this point, like it has a lot of detail. But the thing about it is you can continue to zoom in. Even, even when you think you've seen cell at the end, but no, it's not the end. You can keep zooming in. Whoa. And then and then he's like, oh look, there's another even tinier beetle <laughs> on the inside. And then you can zoom in more. And then and then it's like, no, there's still no end. You can even zoom in even more. Oh. There's even like what is what is this little coral looking thing? <laughs> oh. And then and then you can even continue zooming in and find the detail. Uh, theoretically, like this image is infinite, has infinite resolution, as in you can continue zooming in and there's still more details at, at a finer level. But we are limited by the computer's precision. And the computer numbers can only have remember so many digits per number. Right. And we're going to run out of those. And at that point, things do get pixelated. Now, oh. it is possible still to implement unlimited precision numbers to get around this problem so that you can still calculate the image even at this zoom level. But uh, that is going to make everything extremely slow. And I, oh. I did not want to do that for, for this zooming user interface. Okay. But, but, but there are people who work on this as their hobby. And what they do is they just run a job to have the computer calculate you know, the image at a very, very deep level. Uh -huh. The job is just going to run for a long time. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, it's funny that like this, like these shapes are like similar, but not exactly the same. Exactly. With many things that you see in life, like you're looking for the pattern and you just want to generalize and you're like, yeah, it's yeah. just the same kind of thing. I've seen that before. And it is true that there's a lot of repeated patterns, right. but every <laughs> pattern, every pattern is like has a variation on right. top of the last version of it that you see. And, and there are infinite variations. Even though they look similar, they're a little bit different from the next one in, in, in this Mandelbrot set, which, which is just really crazy. I, I don't even know how it works. I, I can't really explain any of this stuff. <laughs> uh, you saw the code that we wrote. We didn't write that much code, 88 lines of code. Yeah, but like I feel like my mind can't like 
predict like how this will go in terms of like shaping. Yeah, it's, like, it's yeah. completely unpredictable. Yes. Yeah. Like usually you think, oh, I'm gonna write an algorithm and it's gonna give me a regular shape, like a circle or a star right. or something like oh. that. But no, you, you just have no idea. The Mandelbrot set is one of the foundations of chaos theory. And I'm, I'm not going to do it justice, I'm sure. So to summarize chaos theory, what chaos theory is, a very small number of rules can give rise to chaos that it's very, very hard to predict. I, I haven't seen this pattern before, actually. This is, <laughs> today is the first time. I, it looks kind of like broccoli. Anyway. It's like the root of a tree. 